Okay, final chapter. Let's um, finish up with chapter 48. We're going to keep moving right on down the GI tract. Let's talk about intestinal and rectal disorders. The first thing um, that I kind of want to point out is some of the colon disorders that we're going to be talking about. Um, ulcerated colitis, um, and this is um, kind of similar with, to Crohn's disease, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this as part of the inflammatory bowel diseases. And this is just um, like an ulcer in the colon. It would be similar to esophageal and gastric ulcers, but just in the colon. Um, it's got some implications there we're going to talk about later. Polyps, um, these are out pouches in the colon, and the problem here with a polyp is when the stool goes by it, it kind of flings like that, and if that repeats over and over and over, it can tend to cause malignancy. So um, we do screenings now for patients. It's recommended that um, a patient starts getting screened at the age of 50, and the way that we do that is you give them a, um, a substance called like Go Lightly, which empties out the GI tract, and then they go in through the anus and up through the colon and they look at it with a scope and see if they can if they can identify any polyps or diverticulum or ulcers or things like that. So they do a yearly screening because um, if they identify a polyp and they're able to remove it, um, they will, they'll do that because colon cancer actually is one of the easiest ones to treat if they can catch it early. So if they get it early, they can take it out really easy to treat. Um, the diverticula is like a hole in the colon and it causes an outpouch this way. So you can see like there's a hole in it and it kind of outpouches like that. The problem with this is when the stool goes by and they can get things trapped in there, especially if, like there, if there's um, diarrhea or um, like little seeds or particles like that, it can get in there and then that can lead to diverticulitis, which is an inf inflammation of the diverticula. So we watch for stuff like that. Um, constipation is a huge problem, especially in the, in the um, elderly population. Uh, and we're going to talk about that because constipation is a, um, is a huge nursing um, a phenomenon that we deal with. Okay, this is a picture of a megacolon. Um, a megacolon is, um, this is, this is a picture of colon, the colon is not supposed to be this big. So your patient who has certain kinds of colon disorders, what happens is this is how it's supposed to look. Sometimes in certain conditions, like um, like some of the uh, spastic colons, the um, um, not the like sometimes the inflammatory ones can cause that. The any of the disorders because your your colon is in a constant state of peristalsis. Peristalsis is this. So when the when the um, gastric contents hit the small intestine there's still a lot of water in it. So the small intestine um, is removing nutrients and um, things like that that the bloodstream needs. So when it hits the ascending colon over here, it's still fairly liquidy. Um, and so as it goes up the ascending colon, the, what, the, what the large intestine does is remove a lot of the water. Um, but, the, but there's a constant state of peristalsis um, in the colon. And when that peristalsis stops, and it can stop for a variety of reasons, the colon does not like to be manipulated. So if the patient has to have surgery um, where they do something with the large intestine, sometimes the patient will get what's called an ileus, and that's a section of the colon that all of a sudden stops moving. So that's an ileus. So what will happen is as the stool is passing through here, if it hits an ileus, all of a sudden it stops, the, the stool stops moving. It's like a conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt stops, but all the stuff that's on that conveyor belt still backs up. Well, what can happen then, it could lead to megacolon, which is this. And this can, this can be extremely toxic and it can actually rupture, and this can kill a patient. So when a patient starts getting, they will get very bloated, they will get very uncomfortable, that has to come out. They, they, they've got to take the patient to surgery. Um, if, if it's early enough on, and it, there's just an ileus there, 
they will do things to, to support that colon. Like for example, they'll put an NG tube in to suction so that um, the NG suction will pull out gas and fluid from the top so it's not all getting backed up in here. Um, some liquid stool could get around because the stool that gets in a mega colon tends to be get really hard um, and almost like cement. Um, but sometimes the liquidy part can go around it, so sometimes they have to have rectal tubes in and things like that. So this is what a mega colon looks like. It can kill a patient if you don't identify it ahead of time. Um, but really it's just a really, really severe case of constipation. So what you need to do in your patients is figure out what are some causes of constipation. We know that certain medications do, narcotics are horrible for causing constipation. Surgeries will cause constipation, especially GI surgeries because the bowel does not like to be manipulated. Um, uh, inactivity, people that are immobile, dehydration, um, uh, poor diet, thing, um, diets that are not high in fruits and vegetables can um, cause constipation. So, so once you identify that your patient um, uh, has constipation, um, you need to prevent this from happening. This is an extreme end, but I just needed you to know what that is. Okay, so let's talk about irritable bowel syndrome versus inflammatory bowel syndrome. Your book, um, your book separates them out. Your book talks about um, inflammatory bowel syndrome and calls it kind of spastic colon, um, and that can lead to a megacolon. Spastic colon is just kind of where the colon is like, uh, like that. But again, the problem is it's not moving stool forward, so stool just kind of sits there and gets cement-like. Um, that's it, like an inflammatory bowel. In irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, there's, um, uh, I'm sorry, in inflammatory bowel syndrome, there's two kinds. There's Crohn's disease and there's ulcerative colitis, and they're they're similar but they do have some differences. Your book has a really good table in there about some of the differences between UC, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease. Um, it, it basically, ulcerative colitis is it's, it's just the large intestine. It does not involve the um, small intestine at all. Crohn's disease can involve just the large intestine but it can also involve the small intestine. So Crohn's disease will affect um, all of the GI tract from the duodenum down, um, and ulcerative colitis is uh, an inflammatory disorder of just the um, colon, and specifically the, the tra uh, transverse to descending colon. Um, table 48.4 uh, in your book is, I think that's the one that talks about the differences between Crohn's versus ulcerative colitis. Now, with both of these disorders, um, they're fairly common in the United States. They have a varying degree from mild to severe. Um, they cause a lot of discomfort, bloating, um, diarrhea. So they can have um, bloody stools to them. They can have um, numerous, like six, eight, twelve, um, you know, bouts of diarrhea a day, which has significant social implications, like who wants to go to a party when you're running to the bathroom constantly. Um, they can, the perianal anal area can get excoriated because, as you know, if you're having diarrhea constantly, um, that, that your perianal area can get um, sore. They tend to be thin, malnourished because they're not, um, uh, especially in Crohn's, because they're not extracting the nutrients. Um, and sometimes they have to go in and just do surgery and just take out the piece of colon that is um, infected and then they end up with uh, colostomies and ostomies or ileostomies or wherever. We're going to talk about ostomies in a minute. So, but I do want you to know that because these are very common. We do have some good medications. We do have some treatment options that we can um, give our patients, but those are very, those are very difficult. We don't, we don't have cures for them yet um, unless we just take out a piece of the colon and then do um, an ostomy. So we don't really have um, like super great ways to treat that yet, but it's very common. This, you'll pro I'm sure you'll see this in your practice because it's pretty common. So how do we fix it? So if a patient has um, ulcerative colitis, um, and, and there's a, a section of that colon that is infected, um, sometimes, and they've done everything else, and the patient's just miserable, we're gonna have to go in and take out a piece of colon. 
they will cut the colon off in the areas that it's infected and then, or affected, I mean, and then they can, can create a stoma up here. And then usually that helps the patient feel a lot better. They don't have all the bloating, the diarrhea, the cramping, um, the abdominal pain, the bleeding. Um, although then they have to live with an ostomy. So it's, a, it's absolutely a trade-off. Um, and that is something that the patient will discuss with their surgeon and, um, you know, after, you know, weighing the risks or the benefits. So there's a couple different kinds of ostomies that um, I want you to know about because ostomies are very common and you're going to see a plethora of ostomies in your practice. Um, and it's, it all depends on where along the GI tract the stoma has to be created. The stoma is the opening on the skin, um, and the ostomy is, is another name for opening on the skin, and it's really just where you create it. So if you create it in the ileum, it becomes an ileostomy, and the stool that's going to be an, an ileostomy is going to be significantly more liquidy, uh, and more like diarrhea because it has not yet hit the large intestine where a lot of the fluid gets um, pulled out. So if you have an, an ileostomy or a jejunostomy, though the stool that's in those pouches in the bag is going to be more like diarrhea, whereas if you have um, like an ostomy that is, I guess none of these are there, um, like a, like a colostomy, which is in the um, in the colon, that's going to be much more like um, like what you think of as normal stool because it's going to be a lot drier because a lot of the fluid has gotten pulled out um, from the um, from the large intestine. So just kind of review that a little bit. There's a bunch of different kinds. Um, they can do pouch. Um, like K pouches and stuff where they actually create a pouch out of the um, intestine itself. They can create a pouch down here um, instead of like a bag kind of thing. A lot of patients prefer that. Um, there's like an S pouch where they have like an ileal reservoir in there and so they, they create so almost like an internal bag. Um, so